Hello, good morning. It is Monday morning, the 11th of February, 2022. Welcome to the Morning Watch. Starting a new week. Hope your weekend was a good one. Hope your upcoming week is going to be a good one. Uh, give some time for people to come in. Hi, Robin. Hey, Connie. Good to see both of you. Hi, Wilma. Good to see you too. LaDonna. All right. Let us know as you come in. If you got any prayer requests, please put those into the into the comments. There's my sister Glenna. All right. Well, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get started. These Proverbs chapters are a bit longer, so I can't dwell as much on things as I like to normally. Hi Peggy, good to see you. Hi Kim. All right, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this morning. We just come to into your presence this morning, Lord, with with thanksgiving and with awe of who you are. Um, we're thankful that we can start our day in your word and that we can get our life, our mind, our spirit aligned with you early in the day. So, Lord, I pray that as we study your word that you would use it to challenge us and transform us into the image of your son. Lord, we are thankful for what your cross represents. We're thankful, Lord, for what your empty tomb represents as we move closer and closer to Easter. Lord, be with us today. Guide us. We love you. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Here's my mom. Sp unspoken prayer request that Connie has, so let's please join with her in that. God knows all of the details. We don't have to know the details. God knows them, and that's the one who needs to know them. All right, let's read Proverbs chapter 6. Solomon starts out by writing, he says, My son, if you become surety for your neighbor, have given a pledge for a stranger, if you've been snared with the words of your mouth, have been caught with the words of your mouth, do this then, my son, and deliver yourself. Since you've come into the hand of your neighbor, go, humble yourself, and importune your neighbor. Give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hunter's hand, and like a bird from the hand of a fowler. What is this? What is he talking about here? Well, he's talking about when someone that you know, or even mentions a stranger, when you get into a relationship with them where their debt becomes your debt. It's worse than co-signing for a loan. This is like literally you are responsible for paying their debt. He says, don't sleep until you get that resolved. Very practical, very practical things, okay? Because Solomon is saying that that relationship is an entrapment for you and that you must guard yourself against that. Verse 6, <clears throat> Go to the ant, O sluggard, observe her ways and be wise, which, having no chief, officer, or ruler, prepares her food in the summer and gathers her provision in the harvest. How long will you lie down, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Your poverty will become will come in like a vagabond, and your need like an armed man. All right, what's Solomon talking about here? He's talking about not being lazy. Okay, he talk he uses the ant as an example. In nature, one of the the coolest little creatures because they are very industrious. They don't have a king, Solomon writes here, or a ruler, or a captain, or anybody to kind of like guide their work, but they know what to do. They they know that, hey, it's 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 good weather. We need to gather up so that we can have a harvest later on to survive the winter, okay? And he's telling us, how long will you be lazy? Take it upon yourself to work and make an impact to provide for your family, okay? So... We can look all around us like that in, uh, in nature and get, and, get, and get lessons. That's what Solomon is doing for us. He's already dealt with two very different kind of issues, right? 
being in debt with a friend or a stranger. And now it's talking about not being lazy, using the ant as an example. Verse 12, he says, A worthless person, a wicked man, is the one who walks with a perverse mouth, who winks with his eyes, who signals with his feet, who points with his fingers, who with perversity in his heart continually devises evil, who spreads strife. Therefore, his calamity will come suddenly. Instantly, he'll be broken and there will be no healing. All right, what's Solomon talking about here? He's talking about a person here, specifically someone who walks with a perverse mouth. Someone who, in verse 14, Solomon writes, who spreads strife. Right? As believers, you and I need to be defined as people who live and interact with other people in in spirit and in truth. We worship in spirit and truth. We live lives that are full of grace and full of truth. Um, we need to be those people who don't spread strife, but those who spread love and peace and truth in the midst of the world that we live in. Okay? So we should not be those people who walk in perversity who spread strife because Solomon said his calamity will come suddenly okay what we say matters <clears throat> verse 16 this is a very very direct section here that we see that um, there's just a few places in scripture do we get this kind of direct teaching look at verse 16 there are six things which the Lord hates oh okay let's read closer okay uh, because here's the thing. If the Lord hates them, we should too. Okay? The things that that that, uh, that that he hates need to be the stuff that we hate. So let's read on. He says, yes, seven, which are an abomination to the Lord. So he expands. Verse 17, haughty eyes. Okay? Prideful eyes. Arrogant eyes. A lying tongue. Okay? God likes honesty. And hands that shed innocent blood. All right, that makes sense. A heart that devises wicked plans. Okay, a heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that run rapidly to evil. A false witness who utters lies. And one who spreads strife among brothers. Okay, so it's interesting when you see those things. Those things in there that I'll have to say that um, none of us are really innocent of those things. Those are things that all of us can claim that we have done in various times. Okay, But in Christ, we're covered, right? If you know him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue. All right. Verse 20. My son, observe the commandments of your father and do not forsake the teaching of your mother. Okay, then he and he he said this before, but he comes back to it again. How we need to keep those teachings front and center in our lives. How do we do that? He says, bind them continually on your heart, tie them around your neck. When you walk about, they will guide you. That's the point, right? Is as you're living life, the things of God's word that have permeated your heart and your spirit and your life. They guide you as you walk around, as you as you go through life. He says, when you sleep, they'll watch over you. Oh, that's a beautiful picture. When I'm asleep, I don't know what's going on. But he's saying here, those things will guide you there too. He says, when you awake, they will talk to you. I love that. He says, for the commandment. Oh, I love this. Look at this verse, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching is light. I love that. So it's like saying that the commandment is the object or the mechanism or the structure that the that the word comes out of. And then the teaching itself is the light. You and I are called to be, as, as Christians, we're called to be salt and light. Light into this world. Okay? And reproofs for discipline are the way of life. Okay? Discipline to keep you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. Do not capture, do not desire her beauty in your heart, nor let her capture you with her eyelids. For on account of a harlot, one is reduced to a loaf of bread, and an adulteress hunts for the precious life. 
Now, know this. This is this is part of this. He's talking about adultery. He's talking about living, living an immoral life. And he says here, can a, this is, and this is true. This is talking about don't you know flee all appearances of evil, not associating yourself or getting too close to evil things because they affect you. All right. Look at verse twenty-seven. Can a man take fire into his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Solomon is asking rhetorical questions. The answer is no. You can't take fire in that close to you without it having negative impact. He says here, or can a man walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorched? So is the one who goes in to his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her will not go unpunished. Men do not despise a th men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is hungry. Okay, but when he is found, he must repay sevenfold. Okay, so if somebody steals food from you, and they are hungry, then give them some grace. Don't despise them. But if they're caught, then they're going to pay back seven times. <clears throat> he must give all the substance of his house. The one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. Pretty straight talk. He who would, who would destroy himself does it. Wounds and disgrace he will find, and his reproach will not be blotted out. For jealousy enrages a man, and he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not accept any ransom, nor will he be satisfied, though you give him many gifts. Okay? So we are entering into that part of, of Proverbs when Solomon is writing very practical instructions to us. Um, I've suggested before, a lot of people will use Proverbs as a daily reading plan. There's 31 chapters. Most of the time there's 30, 31 days in a month, and they will, they'll read Proverbs 12 times in a year. Okay, and so on the first day of the month, you read Proverbs 1, second day of the month, Proverbs 2, and so on. So, um, you've already seen, I've already seen, full of such amazing wisdom and truth that we should, we should avail ourselves of this on a regular basis. All right, who's joined us since we started? There's Teresa and Diane, Rosemary, Terry, Tina, Patty, Kim Yance. Wilma has a prayer request for Dennis Halcombe. All right, it's just David battling cancer. God knows all the details. Let's remember those prayer requests. All right, tomorrow we'll be in Proverbs 7. I hope you all have a good day. Um, I hope that you have opportunities today to share the gospel with someone, a friend, a family member, a co-worker, a stranger even. Someone who you're not really sure or you know where they stand with God. I hope you get opportunities calore today because I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, this is something I'm very sure of. If you pray and ask God for those opportunities, those opportunities will present themselves. Okay? They will. And so that's my prayer for, for me and for you today is that we get a chance to be salt and light, to be bold in our faith rooted in the word of God, led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, that is my prayer for, for me and for you. Hi, Shirley, good to see you this morning. All right, let's pray and then we'll, then we'll just get our day started. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word and the truth that we've learned from your word this morning. Lord, these prayer requests that were mentioned, the unspoken, Lord, the one battling cancer, pray, Lord, that you would Give strength and peace and healing. The unspoken request, Lord, there are many. Lord, we pray that you would do your will in each one of those. That you would heal and give comfort and peace and direction. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. Have a great day, y'all. Love you, and we'll see you tomorrow.